Hello, we are live and I'm waiting for our guest of the hour, Christine White, to join us. Sent her an invite, so just waiting for her to hop on. We are going to hear about her surrogacy journeys. She is a two-time surrogate out of Southern California. And I'm excited to hear about her different journeys because she had um, one journey where the intended parents were... Oh, she's here. She's coming on. I think, I hope. Ah, there we go. Technology. Hi, Christine. Hi. How are you? I'm peachy now that we're on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's always like the beginning. Whether it's here or Zoom, I'm always like, ah, did everything connect? But. You may. Well, I felt like I had a good handle on Zoom, especially this week. My daughter does uh, was doing testing, and then um, it was logged in under her. So every time I was trying to log into the old Zoom, it was like Logan Riley. I'm like, oh, gosh, how do I, how do I get this on? Logan, come help me. I have done that, <laughs> especially when the kids were doing distance learning yeah. during COVID. It was well, and we do homeschool, so essentially that online it looks very similar whenever we have to do the testing part so got it got it well good for you how fun mm -hmm. that sounds fun i mean it's a blessing and a hard to be difficult with you. <laughs> it can be it can be hard it can be hard but yeah. um for us the good are always the bad so yeah totally there's a lot of benefits so mm -hmm. good for you well thank you for joining me thank you for having and me. being willing to share your story um <clears throat> I just want to have a casual conversation and just want you to be able to talk about your experiences and, um, you know, all of all of that good stuff. Um, I just shared in the in the initial post that you were a two time surrogate out of Southern California. So that's really all anyone knows as of right now. So if you want to just kind of do a quick intro as far as, you know, if you want to share any other information with us about your kids, your family, anything like that, or maybe how you got into surrogacy in the first place? Okay, um, I'm Christine. I am a wife and mother of two keeper babies. I call them. <laughs> they're mine. They're mine. I love um, that. I've never heard that before. <laughs> and um, my, I actually was lucky enough to meet my husband in high school at the age of fifteen. So, um, what I I lack in a lot of um, different relationships I have definitely made up for in my later on in life through surrogacy, I like to say. Um, even though we met really young, we knew that we we always talked about having lots of kids. And um, at two, I decided we were done. <laughs> at least I, I knew I wanted to stay home with them. I knew um, at a very early age my daughter spent about a week in the NICU and it was nothing that was worrisome it was just essentially from a really traumatic birth um given that birth I realized the first six days that like motherhood is amazing and I would never want to leave her ever 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 again if I could help it so I told my husband on the sixth day that we picked her up from the and took her home for the NICU um I'm quitting my job we're gonna figure it out <laughs> and I'm going to be at home with our babies. Um, so we went on to have our second child in um, exactly two years and one day apart. Wow. And we really wanted them close together. And as soon as we had our second, my husband was like, we, we, you know, we're getting older. You're almost 30. Let's do this. Let's just keep having them back to back. And his number was five. He really wanted five children growing up he wanted five children and um I really wanted two <laughs> um at that point I realized that I was very um a devoted mother so I knew that the way that I wanted to spread myself was going to be amongst two children and I felt like I could handle it um and I was done 
but I instantly started to mourn the fact that I would never be pregnant again. And I instantly started to mourn that I was going to be experiencing all of my first with a new baby or all of their new first for the last time. And um, I just remember being in the hospital and still not even discharged from having our son and my husband saying, um, oh yeah, so-and-so uh, just had a baby. I, I, it was like a, a friend, it was like our sister-in-law's neighbor. And whenever we spoke, um, it had come up that she was a surrogate. She was actually not having her baby. She was having another person's baby. And my husband jokingly said, you could do that. You could do that. If anybody could be a surrogate, you could be a surrogate. And I looked at him and I was like, why do you say that? Like I'm holding our child and he goes, you just do it so easy. It's just so easy for you. And I said, well, like, I guess I don't think it's as hard as, you know, most, some people even have it. And he said, I think you could, you could totally do it. And that ember that he dropped right there, spark and lit a fire in me that I had no idea what was to come the wildfire that would bestow upon my life I instantly felt like he just saw something in me and ignited me to a point where I was like you know what I could do something I could do something to make somebody else's life like better and give them something that they want and bless somebody that you know I if I could so um almost instantly I started to like go on Instagram Instagram and research and just like, oh, what does it look like, you know, and, and it's all snowballed from there. Just one little tiny comment about how I, I could do that. I, you could do that, babe. You're, you know, you do pregnancy so well. And I was like, oh, I really could. <laughs> that is so funny. This is another story for another day, but I had a very similar experience uh, with my husband um, in regards to adoption, because after I have a stepdaughter and we have two biologically together. And then my husband wanted to get a vasectomy. And I, and I, like you, the thought of, I just don't want the option to be taken away. What if we mm -hmm. change mine? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but, 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 and he jokingly said, well, then we'll adopt one day. And I think he just mm -hmm. said that to appease me in the moment, but ha ha ha, because he was later, <laughs> we ended up adopting from foster care. <laughs> so. oh. Jokes on him. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Yep. And I I think that those raw comments from the men or from the people in our lives in general that know us the best, they see something so raw in us that it it's it's almost like an empty comment on their side, but it really like people say things to us all the time, all day, every day, but like those tidbits of people that come from people that are important in our lives. And if it has the power to spark like it did, it's meant to be. Like, yeah. I just genuinely believe that it ain't changing because maybe it's not changing. You didn't see it in yourself, but mm -hmm. it took somebody else seeing it in you for you to really Absolutely. dive Absolutely. in. Yeah. I mm -hmm. love that. Awesome. Well, um, do you want to, I mean, just share about your, I know you've had two. Specifically the surrogacy? Yeah. Why don't you just share your first journey with us, what that looked like, and um, then you can share your second. So my first one was a great experience. It was right out, out of the gate. I kind of had this vision of what I thought I was going to have in a journey. Um, I originally kind of romanticized the fact of, the infertility side of what might be looking for a surrogate. Essentially, I was like, you know, um, women can't get pregnant. And I totally ha see that this, there's this huge void. I had had a friend um, close to me that actually ended up giving birth to her daughter um, very, very early, just barely out state, outside the um, viability um weeks and it was a very 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 thing hard thing to watch so that was another kind of like push so but it was almost kind of just adding up to these chapters in my book of thinking that what my my journey would look like what my whole experience would look like if I was a surrogate and 
whenever I started researching companies, I would hold everything to a standard of what I wanted. And I had companies that um, were bottom line money. I had companies that were um, maybe a little bit of heart, a little too much heart of what I was looking for, like out of the goodness of my heart. Um, then I had companies that were really, Really what I feel like West Coast, how they fit in is they were simply both. They never made me feel like I was a money maker, like they were doing it for the money. They wanted them as much joy out of my journey as I got. And they wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable and I had a good fit. So after filling out paperwork, um, I ended up getting profiles of people that selected me and, um, I tried not to necessarily like judge or have a pre um, idea of what I, what do I, who I was going to be dealing with. And I ended up getting matched with a great couple in England and they are two dads. So sweet. And instantly I felt like, okay. I like, if they're okay with me, they understand my lifestyle. They understand everything that I stand for, why I want to do this, where my hard yeses are, hard no's are, um, then I'm just gonna leave it to God. And if this works out, then this works out. And, um, it ended up being a beautiful journey. First try, we got everything done. It was so instantly easy. <laughs> um, knocked up, I swear, by the time I walked out of that, the embryo was in. Like, we, <laughs> he was sticking with me. Um, so much so that he went through over his due date. He was, or mm, actually, we were like, yeah, we were over his due date. But um, I did not get to meet the couple before because they were in England and they were not residing here at the moment. And, um, whenever they were in the UK, they would contact me weekly. We had a great relationship. They came over for the anatomy scan in the 20 weeks. Um, so I finally got to hug them and hold them and, you know, just really experience, like they got to touch my belly. Oh. It was just, it was awesome. It was, um, I like loved them instantly. I still love them. I felt very taken care of by them. They never made me feel, they were very much in a um, headspace of, you've done this before, we trust you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <You're the> <laughs> um, yes, and it was such like a, an amazing respect for me that they had instantly. Um, and that was, that was just like, to me, it's, it doesn't, you don't, you love your babies that you carry and I always kind of like say it's like uh, I feel like an aunt almost um but like a distant aunt that it, you know kind of like mm, I'm here if you need me but I won't overstep but it's almost like a um love for the parents that you you really you're growing this baby but you know where the finish line mm -hmm. is and that's where you nurture is you're constantly nurturing and you guys are bonding over this thing that you're doing together um so that was amazing they came here for the birth they were here like a whole month early i felt bad because <gasps> i was walking around for like three or four centimeters dilated for like a full 30 days. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I say that embryo attached, he did not want to leave me. <laughs> like, <I'm hungry. laughs> yes, he was. And so, um, he came a little after 40 weeks and it was great. It was great. And they were here for a whole month. I pumped, um, still felt supported. We all barbecued together oh. with my family. Oh. Um, yeah, they just became a part of our like extended family. Awesome. So the kids, got to see your kids got to see where the baby was going who the baby was for what mommy was doing oh I love yeah that. they held oh my gosh we still FaceTime um Aww. we'll do like fun chats the kids know exactly who he is what he looks like their family picture is on our family portrait gallery Aww. um yeah they're still very much part of our lives awesome and what year did you give birth for them that was in 2018 okay. Awesome. 2018. A lot has changed since yeah. then. But. <laughs>
<laughs> the world has changed since then, but yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I had a, we actually did try for a sibling journey, but okay. um, unfortunately I did, we did not get as fortunate or lucky um, because it was the other dad's embryos or a, a sperm, I should say, with the embryos. And it was, I was not the embryo donor. Mm. Um, they used an embryo donor. So they, uh, we tried and it was not successful. So after two tries, um, they were a little heartbroken and decided mm -hmm. to just kind of be a one, one baby family. Yeah. Yeah. That's always hard. Mm -hmm. But good for you for wanting to take, continue that journey with them and wanting to get yes. them. I feel like whenever you do that, um, once for somebody, you, I just, I did, I wanted the best for them. So yeah. if they, and I don't mean to like toot my own horn, but like I trusted myself enough to know I did this once. I know what they want. I, I feel like I should trust myself again to do it again. Yeah. So I just almost didn't trust them with anybody else. If that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't, I wanted that for myself. Like, these I are my them people. Sure, yeah. They were in good hands. So I was like, no, I, and I, I didn't want to do it um, necessarily, but I was like, okay, okay, I'll do it. And then, um, I actually ended up with a positive pregnancy test the second go around for the second, for the sibling journey, but it did not take as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, my, my body just didn't hold on to it. It was, um, from what I have kind of gathered, it wasn't like the best. I don't know if it was the bad, like, I don't think it was a bad quality. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't as good as the first time around. So, um, we just, decided to stop and then that is where I decided okay I can't I can't go out like this not I'm not in done. surrogacy mm -mm, I'm not done I plan on I'm having another baby and I'm having another baby I am I have to do this so instantly went back into the surrogacy pool mm -hmm. I guess um mm -hmm. to try to match with somebody else and then that led me to my second journey and tell us about those intended parents. Oh my gosh, they are um, they are originally local to SoCal. Okay. How well the mother is, um, and the dad is a native to Washington. So they are a little farmer surfer combo, mom and dad. <laughs> the surfer is the mom, mom. <laughs> and the dad's the farmer. And um, I probably got three I want to say I got the second go around whenever I matched again I think I got three um profiles to look at and I when I tell you serendipity I don't I know that I feel like things happen for a reason this is one of the moments that I instantly felt like on paper I was connected to them I don't know if it was the fact that they that she was a SoCal native I don't know if it was because um I I I don't I couldn't even tell you what their profile said all I know is when I saw their profile I was like it was like glowing it was just one of those things that I was like this is who I'm supposed to help this is the storybook that I probably imagined in my head not that same-sex couples don't have infertility issues, but essentially I saw the struggle that they had endured to get them to surrogacy. And this was my couple. This is what I had always wanted to do for people like this. Mm -hmm. And um, th this was, this was it. And I just knew instantly. Um, and then that, oh my gosh, they're a different sort of relationship, probably because I see them more often. Mm -hmm. They are, um, um, they do travel back and forth local to me and they are op like very more, much more accessible. Um, as far as geographically, I can't go 3000 miles with on a whim, sure. but <laughs> they're often down here in Southern California. So, which is sometimes it's a surprise trip. Sometimes it's planned, but essentially they're down here very, very, very often. So, um, I got to meet them. On the morning of transfer, I talked to them almost every day after we were matched officially. Once contracts were done and signed, I just was like, give me your number. You can have my number, anything. I, like, 
I felt like because the amount of losses that she had endured, mm -hmm. she was a very, there's a lot of anxiety around the whole procedure as well as the journey. But like yeah. we were getting down to where we still hadn't even met, her, met each other face to face. And um, the morning that, of uh, transfer that I did get to meet her, it was, it was, she was awesome. The husband was awesome. Um, so welcoming, so warm. It was just, it was great. It was great. So then we got pregnant the first time, first go around, walked out and I told her, you're going to have a baby girl. It's going to be born <laughs> August 17th <laughs> and I'm going to have her in the morning and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm already pregnant. I know. It. <laughs> and she was like, don't get my hopes up. And I said, no, 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 no. I know. Like uh, it's on my heart. Yeah. Like this is what I have always thought about. And sure enough, I, I, um, I missed her due date by nine minutes. <laughs> I had her on October 17th. Um, I'm sorry. I had her on to October 18th. Oh. I, I predicted the 17th because the 17th is mine and my husband's birthday. Oh. So I predicted the 17th. We had her on the 18th only nine minutes after oh. midnight. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but even that was great. That was during COVID. And it was um, a girl. Felt like, mm -hmm, oh. And it was a girl. We did not know. Nobody knew. Well, I think West Coast probably knew, but, and obviously the doctor's office knew, but anytime we had um, files transferred, anytime we had anything done, I would always call my doctor, every single doctor's woman, I walk in and be like, do not tell me what it is. Do not tell me what it is. I want to be surprised. And parents didn't want to know either. Nope. They did not want to know either. They just figured um, this go around would be the only time they could do a surprise because the next time they would probably just kind of go, whatever, you know, sex we had the first time, we'll probably try for the other one for the second time. So, yeah, it was That's great. So cool. so, it was, oh. And we're still, same kind of relationship, friends. Um, I talk all the time. They come and see us when they're in town. We barbecue. They're just a part of my extended family. Oh, I love that. It's so fun. I love getting, um, I don't live geographically anywhere near my intended mm -hmm. parents, but I love getting photo updates mm -hmm. or Christmas cards and just hearing from them and seeing yep. how well they're doing. It's so fun. It makes it worth it. I love that you have that relationship with both of your intended parents. Yes, they're both. Um, and they, they both have really endured a lot. Like yeah. it's, it's just, it's so hard. It's as much as a blessing it is for them that I was able to do it. It really grew my heart in a way that I didn't know I could even grow as a person. Oh open your eyes to other people's struggles. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah. It really does. And it gives you something back. It gives you this, yes, I have family out of it, but I have more self-knowledge of myself, all the things that I grew out of it, all the things that I realized, um, you know, it, it, what I did for my kids or what people, other do, you know, it's just not, it's not an easy, everybody's dealing with their own stuff. And so it's nice to like, know that when I go, a piece of me not only lives with my kids but it's like mm -hmm. other people too I made a difference in so many other people's lives absolutely so. mm -hmm. and what year was that that you delivered the second one? 2020 oh yeah. wow mm -hmm. we left the doctor's office I was actually discharged from our IVF doctor the day California shut down that's a mm -hmm pretty scary thing to go into mm -hmm. being pregnant, mm -hmm. not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, how was I that? Know, I, could, I didn't understand why he was like trying to elbow up me. So I was like, what's going, uh, what's going on? That's the doctor. I'm like, I see, uh-huh. <laughs> and then like, we were what? so happy that we were getting dish, you know, um, graduated. Yeah. And we had heard the heartbeat. So like mom and dad are like hugging and all this stuff. Oh. And the doctor's over there like, okay. <laughs> Oh, oh gosh. He knew yeah, something we did not know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. So how how was that were the parents able to be there in the room, I guess? Because I know so, twenty twenty was a lot of rules changed. Um I had a great facility for OB care. I had a great facility. Um he never denied my parent the parent my IPs um any kind of access. He allowed them huh. every doctor's appointment. Um I made it 
known very early on that I wanted them to be present for everything that they could. I never wanted to them to be denied anything. And um, the first appointment, I don't even think the parents could go with me because geographically they weren't here, mm -hmm. but every other time they were a part of every single appointment, whether it was um, I would let them FaceTime in if they weren't here in town, or I would call them or they would be on speaker. We all became, um, they got a really good relationship with my doctor. Mm. Um, very, very similar in, um, they're both surfers, like my IP mom. And then my OB was like, you know, he's kind of like a little surfer dude. So he, um, instantly made that connection. And then, um, yeah, we pretty much got super key and I ended up delivering on a weekend and whenever that happened, I guess they weren't like necessarily understaffed, but the hospital itself wasn't as tight anymore in October. So the dads um, stayed outside the room and I was able to deliver um, with mom. So she was the first one that was able to see and greet her baby and um, go out and tell dad exactly what they had had um yeah so it was they still got to you know not 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 like the first surrogacy round where everybody was in the room but yeah. um i did take a good hard look at why i was doing surrogacy and i really wanted to make sure that I knew COVID had taken a lot from a lot of people as far as like not getting them to not allowing experiences. And I just mm -hmm. felt like she had already not experienced pregnancy herself. Right. I got to suck it up and I got to, I, she's got to be my person. She's got to be the one that is in the, with me in the trenches. And we're just going to let the boys go, you know, hit up Starbucks and watch a movie and Netflix <laughs> and the, in the waiting room um, so we got lucky and it all worked out just like that she was a super super great support stayed in there with me the whole time um yeah it was just awesome it was I wouldn't have I wouldn't even change that my husband was um really nervous about that part really nervous right. he did not yeah he was okay with either way but he was very nervous about you know he had always been happened. with you for the other births mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so he was a little like are you sure like I'll do whatever just tell me what yeah. you want and um I, I could tell that he was very like okay okay but I'm gonna be right outside this door mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so oh I love that yeah. I love that you did that that's awesome very cool I wish they all could have been there because believe me, yeah. the more at that point, it's like, we've all come so far. We've all come so far. We all deserve this finish line. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That must have been hard for so many and hidden parents that year to not be in the room, to not have those experiences. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine. I'm I actually better. definitely ended up, I ended up freaking out a little bit and kicking my husband out of triage because he showed up. I, drove myself to the hospital because I knew I had gone in labor, but they had kind of scared me so bad about if I, whoever I show up with, I'm stuck with the whole time because of COVID. And so I drove myself to the hospital and um, my husband's like, I'll see you in a little bit. They're going to send you home. And I was like, no, I'm in labor. I'm in labor. I'm, I'm, I'll stay. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you in a little bit. And I called him. I was like, told you I'm in labor. They're keeping me. And he's like, okay, I'm going to bring you your bag. So he comes up and walks into triage with my bag. And I'm like, you have to get out of here. I can't, this is not a part of our birth. I don't know this man. <laughs> I don't know him. Time out, time out. <laughs> and she instantly was like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, um, essentially they didn't have admin there so they weren't as regulated on the weekends but I just he was like it's just triage and I was like get the mom here okay Throw I don't understand the bag. and then, right. and then right. the nurses came in the nurses were like it's okay yeah. we know your plan like let's just not let two people in the same room at the same time like so I'm like, okay, because I'm thinking, I mean, I just slept in bed with him. Like, yeah. I, I guess it, does, it doesn't really matter, does it? And they were great about it. So, okay. but I instantly got fearful of like, oh my gosh, this mom is going to, she's done all this. And I told her she gets mm -hmm. to be in here. And then all of a sudden she can't because you brought me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, 
he, he dipped out really quick and him and dad literally in and out for Southern California lovers in and out and Starbucks <laughs> all night and Netflix in the, in the waiting room. That's hysterical. I love it. Yeah. So. Very cool. Very cool. What, uh, oh, that was 2020. What, wait, do you see yourself doing this again? No. Or are you done? I'm You're done. instantly, um, it was one of those other instant epiphanies. I have always enjoyed having my body back mm. and feeling like my own. And I'm sure many people can relate to this, but like as a mom and a new mom, I nursed and I breastfed and pumped for a whole year for my daughter. Then I did it for a whole year for my son. And then when my first surrogacy came around, it was a whole year's worth of shots and a whole, you know, cause it's a prep. It's not like a, okay, we're getting pregnant. Like it's a, it's a lead. It's a very big calendar year, if not more. And um, then I pumped for them until they went back to the UK. And then whenever they went back um, and we tried again, you know, I was there again with the hormones and the shots, and the shots. and yep subjecting my body again and then when I realized this one and I had gotten to the point of the no shots um and then we graduated from all the infertility um, medication I instantly was like okay I know I want to pump for the baby I'm not sure if this is going to work out I'll give it my best shot again but for my sanity I think I have to close the chapter of sharing my body with anything or anyone at that point, I just did it for essentially 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, well, I mean, you were pregnant or like pumping eight, or nursing for 10 years straight. 10 basically. years straight. Yeah. Yes. And I was 35 years old and I was, I, yeah, I'm like 33% of my life. Like I was done. I was done. Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was just, I just couldn't fathom giving my body any more than just peace at this time at the after that so i love having those surrogate babies and rolling mm -hmm. over and going to sleep yes <laughs> like, you can get laying on them back again. <laughs> <laughs> and um even i was up you know every two hours pumping that was fine mm -hmm. but i did not have the responsibility of watching this child do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. constantly every breath every I, I didn't have that worrisome and neither did my husband. So it was very like, um, I was ready to have my body back, but mine body and soul to be honest with you. It was everything. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So I knew, I knew I was done. I knew that chapter was, yeah, we were done. Fair, mm -hmm. very fair. Mm -hmm. And I totally feel you because I have been there myself. <laughs> um, yeah. It's liberating to, to know that, you know, your body is your body and you're not, mm -hmm. you know, doing something for somebody else with it so very cool well it's a very opposite you when you have like a spectrum of oh my gosh that's my last baby like the last time that's the last time i'm going to feel a kick that's the last time i'm going to feel and then you go oh that's my last baby i'm done like there was very opposite sides of yeah. i knew i was done and um i've had friends that i have people in my my life that have actually reached out and been like, you know, I would love to hire you as my surrogate. I would, um, family members, friends, and even for them, I'm like, I, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, I maybe, maybe if you would have started, if I would have started with you, but mm -hmm. I'm just, I, I know my limit, and that was my limit. I was that good for you for knowing, mm -hmm. knowing that and honoring that for yourself. Yes. So. What have you, what do you, or what would you say is, has been your favorite part of surrogacy in general? Oh, the relationships that came out of it, 100%. I still love my IPs. I still love their babies. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a love that I don't think I would have ever known or a bond that I would have ever known if I had never, never done this. It's a different kind of respect. It's a different kind of relationship it's a different kind of love like I love them as they are family even if we're not blood related mm -hmm. even if we didn't grow up together even if we didn't we share something that nobody else that those children know my heartbeat just like mine they yeah. just know I just got yep. how I took inside <laughs> mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. It's a, it's a different, it's a different feeling. It's a different like bond. It's a different love for them mm-hmm. too. I just, I love them. And I physically was able to put my sometimes life on the line to mm-hmm. bring their children in. And um, like I say, this is where the ant thing comes in. I would do just, just about anything for those kids. Uh, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yes, the relationships are a huge blessing and probably one of the biggest um, positives that come out of surrogacy, I think, Absolutely. as well. Yeah. What has been the hardest part for you? Fourth trimester. That was really hard. For both, um, both, um, both journeys? Both of them. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a transition to go from mm-hmm. whole, being everybody's, being anybody's one thing and hold, holding so much responsibility and holding so much of their future and to instantly shift to, okay, that's not your responsibility anymore. Um, it's hard. It's hard. It's not, I don't think surrogacy is for like the weak or the faint of heart that get their feelings hurt easy. Um, it's just that type of thing that you have to understand. It's a new transition. It's a, it's a chapter just like jumping into surrogacy it's yeah. not a jumping out. It's essentially jumping out because it's, it's just as fast as you got pregnant. It's like, it's, it's over that fast. It's like, mm-hmm. it's the baby's out. You're, you're, yes, you might have all these things, but you're not the sole provider for that child anymore. They now have their own set of lungs, set mm-hmm. of everything that they, you know, that they're being nurtured by their parents and It's a transition for us as surrogates to stop and be like, okay, that's, I'm not going to be checked on 20 times a day. That's okay. They Mm -hmm. are worried about their baby. They're Um, building their own. You kind of have to find like, yeah, you have to like find peace in that. It's a transition and it's, you know, with all the hormones and the sleep deprivation and the getting up and pumping Mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and just all the physical things that you have to deal with, deal with. um, It's a lot. It's a, a, it's definitely like. It has the ability to be really hard, um, but I think you're like a good support system is where mm-hmm. that made it so much and easier, right? Saying, I think I recall what mm-hmm. Coach has an amazing, um, they offer amazing support. Um, mm-hmm. I recall mm-hmm. monthly calls with my support person, mm-hmm. um, and that continues after birth. Mm-hmm. So were you able to connect with them and have them help you through that? Yes. So I became really good friends with my case manager, Debbie. She's awesome at West Coast. Um, Amazing. Everybody, everybody was really kind, was never not um, attentive. They were just very um, prideful, too, in, like, in our journey. as You know what I mean? It wasn't just, it wasn't their victory. It wasn't my victory. It was it was everybody's victory. It was like, wow, like you guys did this. We all did this together. It was a great, um, great support. Um, anytime I ever reached out, I always got great help. Always. Never, never was I left stranded. Never did I ever feel alone. Um, yeah. But I mean, essentially I got to give credit where credit due. And that's probably my personal family. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> kids and husband. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They, I mean, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was one for the books. It was definitely, my husband knew I was done. My kids knew I was done. It was a, um, a little bit of, oh my gosh, we got my mom, we got mom and my husband's like, I got my wife back. Yeah. Like I, there's no more limitations with how far we're able to travel or if she can pick up a 20 pound weight or, you know, just little things like that. Yeah. So, um, settling yeah, back and, into normalcy. Mm-hmm. but it is a transition so I feel like you have to give yourself grace and be definitely prepared for that but if you're not prepared it is a slam in the face because no matter what it's coming sure mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. there's all sorts of feelings that could surround that for different people so yeah, yeah. it's good to be aware of that absolutely um I know that West Coast um, has a generous compensation plan. And mm-hmm. I've, when I was a surrogate, I used to tell people if 
we got paid you know the compensation hourly <laughs> uh, for the nine months plus the shots and it would be less than minimum wage so it's it's not like we're it in it for the money it averages like it averages like two or three dollars an hour by the time you're really if you really get into the nitty gritty like it's very um it's compensation don't get me wrong and it's not i don't think you can ever do it for just the money it's a huge blessing right yes but i used to laugh at people who who would think that surrogates did it for the money i would be like you're crazy yes it's a blessing mm -hmm. because you know you're it, compensated yeah yeah, yeah. but uh so not everything no <laughs> For sure. not everything. But my question is where well, I know that a lot of surrogates, you know, take a special trip with their family or are able to work on the house or do something. Were you able to, um, how did, how did it bless your family in that way? Do you really want to know? I mean, yeah, if you're really Trans sure. I mean, I'm transparent. Um, sure. Me and my husband have been able to get out of a large amount of studio debt. And it was one of those things that um, they were private student loans. They were never going to be forgiven. My husband is in public sector, but he did go to an art school. Um, we got married very young at 22. And it was one of those things that whenever I had my daughter and I instantly knew I wanted to stay home with her, I knew that I was going to have to make huge compromises and huge things. And whenever we had our son, um, we were still in the middle of those compromises and that nothing was going to change that. Yeah. But when I found surrogacy, it was not something that I did for compensation. It mm -hmm. was, I could totally do that. Oh wait, you're compensated. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like, I, I, I don't even know what I was. Nice to be <laughs> I did not um, expect compensation I just essentially was like oh yeah I could get pregnant for somebody else like that would be a really nice thing to do and then all of a sudden I realized oh no I would get compensated for it okay like maybe that is something that I should do and it just fit so nicely into mm -hmm. our lifestyle and the compensation was the garnish it was the cherry on top it was never the meat and potatoes of anything yeah it just essentially was I can't foresee something fitting any better in my life right now. And I can't foresee my heart being into anything other than this. Um, because I was genuinely thinking maybe I should do like a nighttime or a part-time job after we had our son. And maybe it'll, you know, we were on track, we were doing fine, but it wasn't where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. sure. So um, I looked at it as I am being blessed with this ability. I am being blessed to bless somebody else and I will gladly take that blessing and be okay. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I, but I, I'm not even kidding. Whenever I started doing, uh, whenever I started to realize like, okay, well, how much money is involved? I started doing calculations and I'm like, oh yeah, if anybody ever tries to come at me <laughs> for comp compensation, like we're looking at a couple bucks an hour loves. Yeah. <laughs> so absolutely well yeah that's awesome able to get out a mound full of debt that i'm who who knows how long it would have taken us to yeah and what a get rid of blessing that you were able to take that a lot of that weight off your shoulders and your family you know mm -hmm. financial situation and yep. able to it will not haunt us for 30 years we are completely student loan free mm -hmm. now not mm -hmm. one student loan is done um 120 000 worth of tuition was always covered between student loans and grants and all these things and i just kind of think like if i mean like anybody can do it it really can be done it's just one of those things of like i it feels so heavy it feels so heavy in the moment and um whenever i realized that i was probably going to be working and doing all these things and then i went oh wait i was I, i'm compensated like okay <laughs> now now this is what i've been looking for do you know what i mean it, like it instantly took one of the things off my plate it was like i said the cherry on top it was instantly like yep this is this is what i'm dro driven to do i always like to say that you know the surrogacy journey it's, it's a win-win for everybody you know mm -hmm. um, so that's awesome Good i agree i agree i don't think i would have done it any differently 
ever across the board. I loved every pain, every, everything. I loved um, even, even what brought me to surrogacy, even the little ember that my husband kind of just like threw out there. And when we decided we didn't even want any more kids, um, I think of everything happened the way it should have happened. And I'm here, my kids are happy, my husband's healthy, my husband's happy with our journeys. Um, and there's two new souls on the world that who knows mm-hmm. might not have been there if I wouldn't have just jumped and True. said, why not? Why not? Absolutely. Very, very cool. Well, we can wrap up. It's almost been an hour. The time has flown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't realize oh gosh. It's almost been an hour. Do you want to close with any other tips, tricks, or final thoughts? Ooh, tips or tricks. If somebody hmm. was going to be a surrogate, maybe something you wish you would have known sooner, or I don't know. I, hmm. I would <laughs> say, I know, there's so many, right? I know. Um, I would say every part of a journey, if you're looking to be a surrogate, or if it doesn't even work out and you're not a surrogate, I would say that every single part of it is an experience and to embrace it. Um, I've gone through through joyous times. I've gone through super great outcomes. I've gone through less than great outcomes. You know, I, we've had two failed transfers and it was hard. It was never easy. Um, I had to mourn those. I had to mourn the fact that I was never going to carry a baby again. It was just in, it's, it's an experience. It's life. And I feel Mm -hmm. like anybody and everybody that has the ability to experience surrogacy, um, I know I, I enjoyed it. I know it brought nothing but blessings on my family between my family, my kids, my husband. Um, I mean, I'm talking like I've had second cousins that have come out of the woodworks and, and like, wait, you were a surrogate. Like I, I, I can't have a baby, you know, is this something that I could possibly do if, yeah. you know, or look into, um, so who knows like a I little just, ember yeah, for everything. somebody else mm-hmm. it could um, like be an ember for mm-hmm. anybody else and even if um even if it doesn't work out even if I would have you know not been able to have any at least I would have known about it at least I could have talked to somebody else about it because infertility is constantly uh, I feel like a topic right now mm-hmm. and I feel like it's more prevalent than ever um and I meet somebody all the time and surrogacy comes up all the time. I mean, I literally have a child on our baseball team um, that I helped team mom for and their family found out that I was a surrogate once upon a time. And she's like, and I say surrogate once upon a time, but once you're a surrogate, you're all yeah. a surrogate. <laughs> um, instantly she, she had, uh, she's been plagued with cancer and they really wanted to have another one. And she was instantly well, what, what can you tell me about this? What can I, what are my options? What can I do? You know, and, and something that I probably would have never said, you know what I mean? Given the fact that, um, my, I think my daughter dropped it like, oh yeah, my mom was a surrogate and instantly like their eyes lit up and oh my gosh, you were a surrogate. We have so many questions because we've been looking at it Uh and it's just all those little embers, like life experiences, are meant to be shared and they're meant to like your ability to change somebody's life. I promise is never a bad thing. It's amazing. Absolutely. And you're able to be a resource for other people mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Always and forever. I will always shout my story from the rooftops and I will always sing praises about every single good thing that happened in my journey. West coast was definitely one of them. They were, uh, I mean, they brought me, they brought me to amazing IP couples that, that just, I forever are going to be in my family. Forever. You changed your life and your family. Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. Well, again, thank you, Christine. I'll let you go. I know you're a busy yeah. homeschooling mama. <laughs> I, I can hear the kids. <laughs> They're out there. Mom, I think we're done. They're probably playing like computer oh, games or something. Yeah. <laughs> Keep yourselves busy. Well, thank you for hopping on with me. And um, we'll, we'll chat again. Maybe I have someday. a question yep. for you. Oh, she's what started this whole side of your um, surrogacy search? Like, you know, trying to reach out to surrogates and stuff like that. Um, I, 
I, you know, I've always, I, I'm a three-time surrogate. Mm -hmm. I've um, adopted from foster care. I'm mm -hmm. a stepmom. Um, I'm passionate about wellness. And I've always wanted a platform where I can talk about all these things um, because they're not all the same topic, right? Mm -mm. So, um, but just as you're passionate about surrogacy and like sharing your story with the world, I feel the same about foster care and adoption. I feel, so I, I wanted to start a platform where we could just have conversations about all sorts of different topics. And I wanted, and I thought, when I was trying to do it solo, I was like, there's only so many things I can share about my own story. There's only mm. so many times I can share my, my the same story over and over again. Nobody's going to want to hear my story <laughs> 17 times. And then I thought, what if I interview surrogates? Like, there's so many amazing stories and everyone mm -hmm. has a different experience. Um, and I just love the idea of, like, hopping on here and being able to, you know, yes, we're live now, but the the video will live on forever and um, yeah. it can be reshared. And hopefully I know that it will land in the laps of the people that need to see it. And maybe it will either inspire them to become a surrogate uh, mm -hmm. so that they can bless other lives, or um, maybe it will land in the lap of some intended parents that want to hear the mm -hmm. viewpoints mm -hmm. from a surrogate. Because I've, like you, I've had people reach out to me that I went to high school with that I haven't talked to in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I know you were a surrogate. I have a neighbor. They're going mm -hmm. through infertility and they kind of want to hear from a surrogate's perspective what it was like. Yeah. Um, so I've had many conversations like that with strangers, um, but just who wanted to talk to somebody who's gone through it. So I thought this platform, you know, it's public and hope, you know, it'll land where it needs to land to improve the lives of of whoever it touches. Well, so. if anybody's interested, I also um, am going to be turning my Instagram platform, Stork Stories, into a shareable um, surrogate journey. So people oh. that might, I want, I want to be able to connect people. So if somebody is looking for a surrogate or if somebody is looking for an agency or maybe IPs, um, I just want to kind of broadcast not necessarily mm -hmm. in, in like a deep portfolio, but just like a, you know, here is um, so like a feature. I would love to feature more surrogates yeah. on the page. I would love to feature agencies on the page. Um, just really trying to get the word out and make connections. Share surrog uh -huh. Allow people love to make that. connections um, authentically and, you know, just able to really kind of like see if I can help in that way because mm -hmm. I had a, an amazing um, YouTube turnout when it comes to a couple of my videos and they went insanely viral and hit millions of people and it that was another thing that sparked up the fire yeah. and I was like you know what I maybe I should turn our my uh, stork stories Instagram into people want to hear essentially about doing it. the people same thing well, um, when we're done with this video and after it's posted to the page, feel free to drop the Instagram handle in the comments okay. if anybody cool. wants to follow it. And I can also update the um, the caption with okay. it as well so they can All follow right. you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Christine. Okay. Have, have, have a good weekend. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Okay. okay. Bye-bye.